I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday. In last week's video, I asked you to solve the following chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. Using hydrazine and a dialdehyde species is a classic example of a method used to form heterocycles, in this case, pyrazole. Importantly, this mechanism relies on a series of proton transfers and nucleophilic attacks in order to achieve the overall transformation. The first step in this mechanism is to recall that on each of these nitrogens are lone pairs, which act as nucleophiles and will attack the carbonyl carbon, which is electrophilic. This is going to generate a negatively charged intermediate species where the pi electrons have moved to oxygen. And from here, we still have everything else and we are going to balance out our charges by remembering that now this nitrogen, which has attacked at that position, is going to be positively charged because it contains four different bonds. So this is the first intermediate that is formed in this overall transformation. Now importantly, you were told that you had a catalytic amount of acid. I think the example that I gave was sulfuric acid, but it could be any catalytic amount of acid. And that is going to allow us to protonate. So I'm just gonna use H3O plus to represent our catalytic amount of acid. And now we can protonate this oxygen, which is negatively charged, which is going to generate water as a byproduct. And that intermediate is now an alcohol at that position, and everything else remains the same, including our positively charged nitrogen, which will subsequently be deprotonated by the water molecule or the conjugate base that we formed at this position. So now we have our intermediate, which can then subsequently again be deprotonated by water in order to generate our neutral species, which is going to be an intermediate that is now neutral, and now we can proceed via our mechanism, which you may have guessed is actually going to be another nucleophilic attack. But first, recall that when we deprotonated this nitrogen, we regenerated that acid. And that acid being H3O+, plus, or any catalytic amount of acid, I'm just using H3O+, plus to represent that acid, is now actually going to first protonate this alcohol. So what will happen is this alcohol will be protonated. And on the next screen, what I'm gonna do is start with this molecule to give myself some more room to write on the screen. But remember, we're gonna be left with an H2O plus group here, which is going to act as a good leaving group. So again, all I've done is redrawn that last intermediate so that I have more room to work with. And the next step is actually gonna be the formation of an iminium ion. And in fact, this is the classic example of an addition, addition elimination reaction to, to go through an imine intermediate when trying to turn ketones and aldehydes into imines. So this is going to liberate a water molecule, which we're regenerating to use subsequently in subsequent reactions. And we are left with, again, that iminium ion, which is going to be positively charged at nitrogen. And the rest of the molecule remains the exact same. So now that we have generated this molecule, what's actually gonna happen is that water molecule, which we liberated here, will come and deprotonate this species to generate our neutral compound, which is going to be an imine. So remember, an imine is going to be that carbon to nitrogen double bond. And then we still have the rest of our molecule, which looks like this. And now from here, it's just a series of the exact same steps. So remember, this nitrogen is also nucleophilic because of this lone pair, which will attack the electrophilic carbonyl carbon, kicking up these pi electrons. And then again, we're just gonna do the same steps of proton transfers. Because remember, we regenerated our acid at this step, so this is going to allow us to, to utilize that acid to do those proton transfers. So I've gone ahead and drawn each individual proton transfer step and included them on the screen without working them out independently because I didn't want to bore you. Again, it's just a series of proton transfers that occur sequentially in order to finally generate one of our last intermediates, where we have an iminium ion, and at this step, OH2 plus was a good leaving group, and we liberated water. Now, importantly, what we've done here is we've made two imine or iminium ions, which make this proton at this position incredibly acidic. You would have seen these before in the formation of enolates, where you have a very acidic proton at that alpha carbon position. And when we generated water at this step, what we've done is we've created a conjugate base, which is strong enough to deprotonate this proton, which will then put its electrons at this carbon to carbon bond 
which moves up these electrons to be back as a lone pair on the nitrogen, which is actually the structure of our final product. Again, importantly, even though we're taking a relatively simple molecule and making a new heterocycle, each of the steps were just a series of proton transfers and nucleophilic attacks that you would have learned about in Organic Chemistry 1 or Organic Chemistry 2. So how'd you do? I'd love to hear what you came up with as a comment down below after you liked this video. For next week, I'd like you to solve this chemical transformation and see if you can come up with the mechanism. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on the solution on next Monday's video.